get your bobbin wound and ready and raid your stash and get all of your scraps ready because we're going to make a stitch as you go log cabin quilt. I chose to use teal and gray fabrics for this quilt. I thought that they would really go well together and I had quite a selection to choose from. On the pattern that I'm using, I decided to use four shades of gray and three shades of teal. For me, fabric selection is a bit overwhelming and a little tricky because I don't have a natural talent for putting um, colors together, but I'm hoping that what I put together will be pleasing and will work well on the quilt. I start by cutting the one and a half inch strips that I need. I have a four patch that I ended up not using for a baby quilt, but I'm cutting out the teal fabric and that to use for this quilt. And the fabric next to that is, is a bed sheet that I found at Goodwill. With everything cut into one and a half inch strips, I'm now ready to cut the different size lengths that I need. We start with the middle square and that's one and a half inch by one and a half inch. And I went ahead and I laid out the strips in the log cabin pattern so that I could see if I liked the color placement that I had. In the light turquoise, I am doing two different cuts. One is one and a half by one and a half inch, and the second one is one and a half inch by two and a half inches. In the medium gray, the two pieces are one and a half inch by two and a half inches, and one and a half inch by three and a half inches. In the medium teal, the two pieces are one and a half inch by three and a half inches and one and a half inch by four and a half inches. In the medium gray, I'm cutting one and a half inch by four and a half inches and one and a half inch by five and a half inches. In the dark teal, I'm cutting one and a half inch by five and a half inches and one and a half inch by six and a half inches. And the last gray strips are one and a half inch by six and a half inches and one and a half inch by seven and a half inches. Most of the time I was able to layer four layers of fabric as I was cutting out these strips. I will leave a list for the dimensions of all of the cuts that I made in the description box. I divided the pieces into piles that I would need to build one block. <laughs> 
The great thing about a stitch as you go quilt is that you can use your scrap pieces of batting for it. So here I'm measuring off from the scraps that I have 8 inch by 8 inch squares. And I even have some scraps that aren't quite 8 inches wide. And I'm going to show you how you can sew those together and make the most of all the scraps that you have. Here's a piece of batting that I have that is plenty long but not wide enough. So I'm cutting it in half. I put the straight edged sides together and then I'll put a zigzag stitch on it. Ideally those two edges should be flush together and then zigzagged so that there are no bumps to show through on the quilt but I have done it before and here's a, a sample where it it overlaps a little bit and I don't think that it really shows that much not unless you're looking for it so with the machine on the zigzag stitch I go ahead and sew those two pieces together and you can see there's some gaps but I think with this quilt design that it's not a problem I'm trying to now audition fabric for the backing and not sure whether I have enough of the paper airplane fabric for all of the back. I looked to see if it would look good if I alternated blocks in two or three different fabrics on the back. But ultimately I decide that that will be too confusing for me. I have three lengths of fabric that are large enough for the backing. I'm not sure though whether there's enough for the backing or sashing and binding on just one fabric. So I'm looking at all three fabrics trying to decide which one goes the best with the pieces that I'm going to have on the front. And I decide that if I don't have enough of one fabric to do the backing, sashing, and binding that I can do the backing in one and the sashing and binding in a contrasting fabric. So I decided to do the backing in the fabric that has little paper airplanes on it. I'm cutting the fabric into 8 inch squares. I'm always a little reluctant to cut a lot of pieces out until I know that it's going to work and be the way that I want it to be. Even though I've worked with this pattern a lot, I've made pot holders, I am still not going to cut out all of the pieces that I need at the very beginning. Part of the reason is I don't know how big I want the quilt to be yet. If you'd like to watch the video that I made for the log cabin pot holders, I'll leave the link for that in the description box. They make great gifts and are not as much of a time commitment as a quilt. With the wrong side facing up, I start stacking the batting on top of the backing fabric, the paper airplane fabric. I put the one and a half inch square in the light gray fabric right side up in the middle of the batting that's on top of the backing and I'll show you how to center that in just a minute then I put the one and a half inch square of the light blue or aqua fabric face down wrong side up directly on top of the gray fabric I forgot to do it here, but I like to pin all sides of the batting and the backing together at this point. Now I'm remembering to pin my batting to my backing 
I use the ruler to measure three and a quarter inches on all sides around the middle squares to get them centered. I just recently learned that there is a right and a wrong side or a top and a bottom side to batting and that the smooth side should be the side that you have on top so that it lies smooth against your top fabric. And I found this out after I had done most of the squares so the rough side is on top on most of them. With those pieces centered, then I am going to sew a quarter inch seam down the right side. I tack it down at the beginning and the end of the seam. Trim the threads and then open it up to see the beginning of the log cabin taking place. And I just run my fingernail really good over that seam to make sure it stays open and is flat. The next piece to go on is the light aqua one and a half inch by two and a half inch piece. And I put that on with the wrong side up and again do a quarter inch seam on the right side. This next part of the video I could have edited out and made myself look smarter, but I didn't. And I didn't because it was too funny to take out. If you're afraid of sewing because you'll make mistakes, you need to not worry about it. Because I do stupid stuff like this all the time. I'm looking everywhere for the pieces that go on next, and I can't seem to find them. Found them. <laughs> Guess I'm not ready to do a Jenny Doan Missouri Star Quilt Company tutorial. But the good news is I found the, the pieces that I lost. <laughs> now I'm on track again. I've, I picked out everything that needed to be picked out and re-sewed everything. When I stitch a new piece on, I tack it down about a quarter of an inch from the top part the top edge. And then tack it down about a quarter of an inch before I reach the bottom edge. The first block that I did on this quilt, I forgot to put my walking foot on, but after that, I used the walking foot and I think it helps a lot. In fact, I went back and recorded the different views of stitching when I have the walking foot on. And so if you're confused why, why it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, that's why.
and I'm trying to show you here that instead of using the um, edge or the seam edge to line things up, I line the pieces up against the other seams of the other fabrics. So I try to keep things straight that way by lining it up against the previous seams that I've already done. I hope that makes sense. Now I need to trim off the excess batting and make the block square. You may be wondering how long it took me to make this quilt, and I never know how to answer that question when people ask me, how long did it take you? But I'm going to say that this quilt took me about three weeks to make. This is that square of batting that I sewed together from two pieces. So as you can see, it works out really well in this kind of design or stitches you go. If you've seen my video on the stitches you go log cabin pot holders, then you've already seen these images. But if you haven't, I wanted to just show the different color combinations that you can do when you're making a stitch as you go quilt or log cabin quilt. And maybe these color combinations might give you some inspiration if you're not a fan of teal and gray. I'm cutting some of the backing fabric into one and a half inch strips. And those will be um, the strips that connect the squares together or the blocks together. I'm taking the one and a half inch strips for the backing and pressing them in half. Next, I'm cutting out the strips to make the binding, and I'm doing this in two and a quarter inch strips. I'm also cutting out strips in the same fabric as the binding 
to use as the connecting sashing on the front of the quilt. Now I'm connecting the strips to make the binding and I really don't know how to explain how to do it so I hope that I'm showing you visually enough. I match right sides together and then um, I'm showing with my finger where the stitching is supposed to go. And the stitching turned out really crooked but that's what happens when you're holding a camera phone and sewing at the same time. Jenny Doan did a really good video on how to make an attached binding and I'll leave the link to that in the description box if you want to see more detail on it. And I cut off the excess fabric. And now at the iron and folding this in half and ironing it to make the binding. And I like doing this ahead of time. It will be all ready to go when I'm ready to bind the quilt. I don't have enough blocks yet, but I laid them all out on the guest bed just to get a sense of um, which pattern or which design I wanted to use. And my daughter's little dog found her way up on the bed to be part of the video again. And this is the design or the layout that I'm going to go with. I've already connected several of these blocks to a strip and so right now I'm going to show you how to uh, connect a block to another block. So I take the folded piece that goes on the back and line it up with um, the back fabric. With the two open edges next to the edge of the block and the folded edge um, facing towards the middle. Then I take the one inch sashing that I'm going to use for the top of the quilt and line it up with the right side of the fabric facing the right side of the block. Then I pin all three pieces together to secure them and sew them with a quarter inch seam at the sewing machine. Then I line up the right side of a new block that I'm going to attach to the right side of the sashing and pin it. I eventually move the pins to the other side where the sashing was on top because I discovered that it was easier to sew from that side. 
I flip it over to the back side to sew it on. Um, it seems to work a little easier that way. And voila, that's how you attach the quilt as you go log cabin quilt blocks. With the pieces sewn together, I flip it over to the back and I can just pull that uh, back piece that I sewed on over and pin it and then hand sew it on. If you wanted to machine stitch it on, you certainly could. I just feel like I want to hand sew it. And just a note that you may want to make that, um, that sashing on the back just a tinch wider than I did. Um, it was fine, but I really had to pull to get it to go over the stitching, the machine stitching that I did on it. If it was a little wider, you wouldn't have to struggle with it as much. I forgot to measure the lengths of fabric that I had before starting this project, so I'm not exactly sure how much fabric I used. Probably a yard and a half, maybe a little bit more of that for the backing fabric. If you make it the same size that I did, you are going to need 40 inches by 48 inches of fabric for the back and then extra for the sashing. So you may want to make sure that you have two yards of fabric for the backing. I used the scraps that I had for the batting, but if I were to use a flat piece, I had five squares, eight inches along the top or for the width, so that's 40 inches, and then I had six squares, eight inches each going down, so that's 48 inches, so I would need a piece that was 40 inches by 48 inches. And maybe a half to three quarters of a yard for the top sashing and binding. I needed to make more sashing for the front. I marked the top of each strip with a pin so I would know which was the top. I'm pinning the top and bottom sashing to the strips so that I can sew them on. I had wanted to make a lap size quilt but I'm just, I don't have enough of the backing to make any more squares. So I'm just going to leave it the size it is and use it for a baby quilt when somebody I know has a baby. Now I'm sewing the front sashing, the quilt strip, and the back sashing all together. If you have your sewing machine sitting on a table, you may want to turn turn it so that um, you're on the wide side of the table so as your quilt grows it can lay on the table as you're sewing and that'll give you better control. And I continue on sewing more of the strips together. So I've been sewing these strips together 
and now I am going to pin this strip to the front sashing of the other three strips. I flip it over so that right sides are facing each other. Then I'm careful to line up the sashing with both pieces so that it matches and then I pin it into place. I line up all of the sashing and then I also pin in the middle in between the sashing and sometimes I will need to stretch the fabric a little bit to be able to make sure that everything lines up and fits. You'll want to trim all of your squares to the same size. I didn't do that. I just kind of eyeballed it. And so some were a tiny bit bigger or smaller. Um, but I think it worked out pretty, pretty well for not measuring it. I went ahead and sewed the fourth and fifth strips onto the quilt. And so now I have a nice size baby quilt. So now I'm just sewing up the sashing in the back. I prefer to hand sew it. Some of those junctions are pretty uh, bulky where the sashing meets. The back sashing is all sewed up now. So now I'm just tidying up the edges so that I can add the binding. I start laying the binding about six to eight inches away from a corner. Pinning it with the cut edges next to the edge of the quilt and the fold facing towards the middle. And I just pin it to the next corner and then sew a quarter inch seam. When I'm sewing the seam, I get to about a quarter inch from the corner and then a veer off of the quilt. Then I make a pleat at the top and sew a quarter inch from the top and make the seam down that side. With the binding sewn on all four edges, I come to the end and I need to overlap the two unsewn edges, the length that is the width of the binding. So since our binding width is two and a quarter inches, then I need to cut and trim this so that uh, they overlap two and a quarter inches. Then I overlap the two ends and sew diagonally like I did when I made the binding. And here it is sewn. Before I trim it off, I like to check and make sure I did it right and that it lines up and, and fits flush. And it does. So I trim the edges carefully with my rotary cutter. I lucked out and this turned out just about as perfect as it could be. And so I went ahead and sewed that. And then now my binding is ready to flip over to the back and sew by hand. And here's the final product after the binding has been sewn by hand. It measures 36 inches by 44 inches. And I really like the colors on this one. So thank you for joining me as I made the Quilt As You Go Log Cabin Quilt. Bye-bye.